is only the third day. Shit is going everywhere. It's fucking blowing hard out there. It's been hanging on all night to daylight so I get it. Change the sail, which I just did. Oh, I feel fucking seasick. Everything's wet. Oh, this fucking sucks. I'm a bit worried that I've popped out of the trade wind zone and now I'm kind of stuck here in semi doldrums. I don't know if that's actually possible, but it kills me. So I've just raised the mainsail to work as a stabilizer, and I'm just sitting here waiting for wind. This probably feels pretty bouncy. But this is the best it's been in days. <laughs> Just rolling literally from one rail to the next for the past six days, so this is nice. my mm, uh, ninth day uh, in the Atlantic and progress is, as you can probably see, slow. Um, the weather's a little bit too nice in the sense that it's a light breeze and a gentle undulating swell else really. Um, so it's relaxing sailing which is nice sometimes but uh, I still have 2,000 miles to go and I'm doing less than 100 miles a day so I'm still uh, looking at uh, at least three weeks but uh, I hope when, when and if I find these elusive trade winds which I really didn't think would be so hard to find. 
Maybe I can launch a whole bunch of sail and we can do 130 miles a day. I don't know if that's actually possible in this boat. But... We'll see. So... We just crossed the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, that's the first time I've ever crossed the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, in a boat. <laughs> There's lots of firsts in a boat for me. Um, and it's, it's warm, the sun is very warm, even at uh, 8.30 in the morning, it's, it's very hot. Um, the weather out here is it's really kind of curious, it kind of, you get these big sort of cumulus clouds, or I don't know what they are, it's just these trade wind cloud banks on the horizon, and then you get a sort of uh, flat grey sky up there. Sort of hover around, and before you know it, they disappear, and then it's sunny all of a sudden for a couple of hours, and, and then it rains a little bit, and uh, then it's windy for a while, and it's, it's quite amazing, I guess, because there is no uh, there's no land traps here for the, uh, for the clouds, so. It's just a really kind of transient, transient place for everything and everyone. Um, it's quite amazing. So that's the 9th of April. Is it? Yeah. It's reassuring to see that the um, the radar detector is working. I mean, I know, I know that it works, but. Um, I'm pretty much mid-Atlantic now, and uh, that's the, the first vessel I've seen or detected in um, probably two weeks now. So it's nice to know that um, mid-Atlantic, the merchant ships um, still run radar. Well, that one is anyway. Here's the first flying fish casualty aboard the sailing vessel Constellation. It's a sad morning. A sad morning indeed. But we're going quite fast. So that's nice. So it's five o'clock in the afternoon, um, which is the time every day that I take a plot on my uh, North Atlantic passage chart, and uh, it's a it's a big chart. <laughs> it covers uh, it covers the whole west coast of Europe from Scotland right down to Africa, down as far down as Senegal, and then it goes right across over to uh, Suriname and Guyana, Venezuela and the Lesser Antilles and that's Barbados which is where I'm trying to get to now and uh, it goes right up to Cuba right up to Miami and then this is a contorted map um, and then right up here to New York and, uh, right over to Canada, Newfoundland, Halifax. So it's a pretty incredible chart. Every, every time I, I plot my, my course, I spend about 10 minutes just kind of looking at it. You know, it's, uh, it's incredible. So, there's where I left here, Gran Canaria. 
and it's a bit difficult to see, but there's my track, and uh, I had problems with the wind and blah blah blah. Anyway, so this is about where um, I hit the trade winds, and then um, we've just been good doing about 120 miles a day uh, right now. It's uh, the 15th of April, and we're right here. It's it's hard to show, but um, we're pretty much dead in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, so at this point, we're closer to satellites than we are to land, which is a pretty incredible thing to think about. Um, so we've got to get from here to Barbados. And I think from today, that's about 9 or 10 days, I hope. Because I'm going a little bit crazy. But, um... And then, after Barbados, we'll see what happens. But I'm going to try to go up to Antigua. And go Antigua, non-stop, to uh, New York. Mm -hmm. Probably to Long Island specifically, but uh, we've got a ways to go yet. We're uh, 30 miles away from uh, Barbados now, and it's um, it's still about uh, three hours till um, till daylight, and um, I can't see any lights in uh, I can't see the lights of Barbados yet. So either it's not there or uh, 30, 30 miles is too far. I suspect uh, 30 miles is too far. Let's let's hope so. So I, I can't I can't really sleep now. I've slept for about four hours and uh, I'm on some kind of weird time zone because of uh, um, I've just been sleeping uh, when it's dark and awake when it's light. And I think Barbados time it's it's probably about two or three in the morning. But for me it's uh, it's really only it's it's about seven a.m. If that makes any sense. So I'm, I'm kind of jet lagged, so I guess I'm I'm boat lagged. <laughs> um, but I think in the next three hours, when we get down to when the next two or three hours, we get down to 20 miles. Um, uh, I hope we we can see uh, we can start to see the lights. So here we are. <laughs> we made it. We made it all the way to the uh, to the Caribbean, all across uh, the Atlantic. And uh, I'm here in uh, Port Saint Charles in um, Barbados, in the West Indies. 